The Richmond Rangers. The longest stretch without resupply on the TR hour. Eight days. Some people do it in four if they're really fast, but we're not really fast. So we've got eight days worth of food in the pack. And we are going to Red Hills Hut and maybe beyond. Not sure yet. We have taken the old TA, which is like a, a four-wheel drive um, that turns into a little bulldozer track. It's a little bit of a climb, but it gets you up to over 900 meters and it's fairly relaxed walking. And we just had lunch at Red Hills Hut and are thinking of going a little bit further today to Porter's Creek, which is another four hours from here. Two big thank yous. First um, to Mike a colleague of Renee's who would let us use his beautiful batch in St. Arnett and it was so so cozy. It's nice to have a place to come back to that is nice and warm and it reminded me a little bit of a dog hut but it's more like a little sanctuary in St. Arnett. Thank you Mike for that. Second thank you Jamie and Sophie. Like we are honestly like so so grateful because we were standing on the side of the road for almost two hours and then you guys turned up and you went basically two hours out of your way to get us to Blenheim or Renwick um, and to help us resupply and then you actually turned around and you drove all the way back. Thank you! <laughs> The packs are extra heavy for this section. We have eight to nine days worth of food in the packs. Um, yet, I think we have been quite reasonable with the resupply. <laughs> um, we could have bought a lot, lot more than we have. Um, the weather for the next just about eight days looks so good. There's no rain. In the forecast and that was exactly what I was hoping for because in the Richmond Ranges we do have um, a day of alpine crossings and we do have um, some major rivers that we have to cross but that should be all right because they haven't had any rain up here for a very long time and um, there's no rain in the forecast. I always found the section through the Richmond Ranges to be one of the shapeshifters on the TA. Every day, or every few minutes, you sort of feel like just the surroundings change. And every day you have a little bit of a different scenery. Sometimes you go through bush or beach forest and then you're out in the open. And um, you'll see in a few days, I think it's Maybe it's already tomorrow um, we walk through um, discolored rocks and they are yellow and red. Um, so it's a very interesting area to walk through and I'm so happy that the weather is good. That makes it so much easier. It's actually quite hot today. <laughs> I'm really sweating <laughs> but I'm not complaining. <laughs> And down there you see Motueka River, so that's one of the first river crossings for today. And the Motueka branches, they may not look super big, but the difference is that the catchments are huge. They're enormous. They go kilometers wide into the valleys. So if you have rain, then these things can get flooded really, really quick. So that's one of the Motueka river branches and these branches are the most trickiest here in the Richmond Ranges and people have known to camp on the other side 
for sometimes days or sit in the huts to wait out the flood. Mister, I don't want to get my feet wet. Nee, 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 nee. And now I'm just gonna get the nee, nee. Look at him. Now there's gonna be this big smile. Hey. Motueka River on that side. Maybe that's the last view of Motueka River. Okay, we came from over here, that valley, dropped down to the river and then the track sidled on the bottom, um, just above the river. And then, bull, I totally forgot about that thing. Guess it's different when you come down. <laughs> we climbed up and now at the end you get these massive steps. Oh, nothing else I'd rather want to do when I have eight days worth of food in my backpack. Yee-hoo! the hut just before it got dark last night and um, the reason for that was because we couldn't get a lift out of St. Arnold. We only got a lift after maybe an hour or something and we started walking after 11. So we just managed to get to Porter's Creek hut before the sun went down and today we are looking at another longish day. We are passing Hunter's hut which takes roughly four hours and we're aiming for Top Vairoa hut and it's a beautiful um, orange hut like Porter's um, and um, sits within um, a little bowl just below Mount Ellis and it's quite a, a bushy area so it's really really pretty down there so even though the day yesterday was quite warm we have frost outside and all the grasses and bushes and shrubs are covered in little icing. So it's really cold. The sun has not quite managed to get over the hills, but we're gonna start walking. So the reason why these rocks uh, brown and red and why they are called red hills is because we are walking on a mineral belt. It's the Nelson mineral belt and it's quite a um, narrow belt of rock formations um, that are really really old and it's a part of the earth mantle that we are walking on um, and it is exposed to the surface and um, it's full of iron and magnesium it's quite a cool geological place to be actually and later we have all these red and orange colored rocks to walk across very pretty and what amazes me is just the plants and the shrubs because they have managed to live and grow in a place that is very, well, let's say, not very rich in nutrients, yet they are thriving. <laughs> Must have been quite cold. like a gorilla. You have the mouth and the nose and the eyes.
second branch of the Motueka River and um, that's Hunter's Hut and we drop down to the river, cross the river and follow it up to somewhere over there and climb back over. I think that we end up somewhere over there. Maybe that's Mount Ellis, I'm not quite sure. You guys see all these little green trees scattered around in the hills? Those are wilding pines and they don't belong here. And up there, this is what you need to get rid of them. A helicopter. Bloody expensive. But if they wouldn't do it, this whole hill would be covered in pine trees in a very, very short time. And everything else just dies. And everything else dies. So we're just about to start a climb over here. And I think we take this ridge here and we pop out in the open on that part and walk up and over the ridge. Um, the last time when I came through I had a white out. I didn't see a thing. Nothing. So now I'm gonna see stuff. Yay! We keep saying when people ask how we feel about doing the TA the second time round and <laughs> we always say it's the same but it's different. <laughs> Big climb, very steep. Uh, that's the Motueka River and you can just see Hunter's Hut in the distance there. But we are not finished with the climb. So we go to the, this pole here and I can just see the next one in the forest. Yep, and so I think it's really that ridge that we follow up. Lovely view of Nelson and I think this is Takaka Hill so beautiful coast, Motueka Nelson very pretty it was a bit of a beast wasn't it? beast beast yeah. yes it's a bull a bull a bull up by tree line it's a bit of a view and that's us. Need a today. Still not finished with the climb. Brin had just disappeared in that little gully. But we go up here. So we drop a little bit down and then you can see the trail sidling, climbing up to somewhere here. And in 2016 I managed to get up over uh, the little blip there, over the saddle and then I had a little white cloud in the valley and I saw it. but apart from that the day was fine. So I decided to climb up and when I got up there suddenly this little white cloud turned into a white out. And, uh, I could not see the poles from one pole to the next. So I was constantly shoveling along with my GPS in the hand trying to find the next pole. It was really cold. And then once I got to the other side and I saw the forest, I was I was so glad. Like the cloud disappeared fairly quickly in the in the trees. And then the sun came out again, but up here. Mm. Just a hut down there. One moment. The orange blip. That's the hut. The other thing could be the toilet. I'm not sure. 
but it's a long way down. I didn't realize last time because I didn't see a thing that if you look very very closely you can actually see well you can't see it but you know that this is about where hunter's hut was that we passed this morning so we did this huge dog leg coming up here and we were just wondering why they don't take people up over this thing and come down the ridge in the back. Hmm, not sure. Bye, son. Hello, darkness. We're going down to here somewhere. This is not the easiest way down <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, it's a lot of boulder hopping and um, breaking and from memory it's just gonna get a little bit more bouldery. <laughs> so we had up there where we had a break we had um, about Two and a half k's left, or 2.7 or something. But that's gonna take us a while. <laughs> so close and yet so far. I think it's like less than 400 meters now, but it's still like, look at the. This is what it looks like when you're desperate for a fire. Just you just carry half a tree. Today we follow the Vairoa River and it's mostly downhill but this track can be very gnarly in places, lots of sidling, I call it suicidling, um, lots of washouts, um, a few river crossings, Rene made it across the first river crossing with dry shoes, of course, um, and this morning I noticed I have walked almost the whole South Island with the same pair of shoes and now I don't know I don't know why <laughs> my big toe feels terribly bruised and it's hitting the inside of the shoe and it's so sore I don't know maybe I bruised it yesterday on the steep downhill or God knows <laughs> but how can that be that you walk almost the whole South Island without any issues I didn't even have blisters and now it's like me. <laughs> I hope that it's not gonna get worse. <laughs> Having said that at the same time we have done two really really big days and <laughs> my legs feel locked up as well. <laughs> I'm a bit of a mess at the moment. <laughs> um, so today will be probably another eight hour day or something. We try to get to Tarnhut small really cute hut um, and then tomorrow we would have a shorter day and the lads are back for spraying the wild pines we come here in summertime on a really hot day the Wairawa is one of the best rivers to have a little bath there's so many pools especially further up when it's quite steep and they're really deep and the water is so nice and cold. I'm not sure about the same flight, <laughs> you m might have to be a little bit quick. At the same time you can see how um, you should be doing this in um, a time where you haven't had a lot of rain because 
this thing can be snorty and there could be quite a few tricky river crossings so you want to make sure that you get there when the water level is nice and low and even the track could be quite a bit slippery um, when it's wet the rocks have eyes very creepy That bird was right. This is very gnarly. <laughs> well, it's not firm. We just got to Midvairoa in just over four hours and Midvairoa hut has this beautiful swimming hole so I'm just taking you down there. It's following a little path. Ta -da! Icy cold part of the river and the river comes through the gorge. But so nice to swim in. But look at that color. Swim? No. Too cold. I do remember though that you have to be really fast when you want to go for a swim here because it's full of sand flies in summertime. The trickiest part of swing bridges is how to get on and off the swing bridges gonna be a bit of a grind now we have to climb like 800 meters or something and it's very very steep for a kilometer Woo! grind these orange boxes or the trees are usually closed and they are um, filled with insecticides for the German wasp who was introduced um, because of a beach tree thing. I can't remember what exactly it was, but um, usually in summertime these forests in the Richmond Ranges, Queen Charlotte Track and Nelson Lakes, I think even um, the Huronui's, well anywhere where you get these beech trees, um, they are filled with the hum of wasps and a lot of people get stung on the trail walking past the nests because they usually nest in the ground and there's a few times during the year where wasps get very very aggressive and uh, yeah you want to just be a little bit cautious in those forests but for us now we do see a few wasps every now and then but it's nothing like it, it used to during proper summer so angry wasp season is finished for us Thinks that this is the top where we came off yesterday and dropped down to Top Vairoa. So we must have followed that valley out to Mid Vairoa. It's the uphill that keeps giving. It's the climb that keeps giving. Oh. We've been climbing for six kilometers now, but I think we finally have gotten to the top. <laughs> My legs are so tired. 
something from up here. We probably dropped for another kilometer and then we're down at Tarnhut and we have made it before sunset. <laughs> the last two nights we basically just managed to get um, to the huts just before it got dark and it doesn't seem to give your body enough rest to be a happy body the next day so now it's just after three and we we'll probably get to the hut quarter to four maybe and start collecting firewood to make it nice and toasty maybe wash the socks and rest 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 and rest the shorter daylight hours make it actually quite tricky in the Richmond Ranges. Every day is quite long but it gets light around quarter past seven in the morning and sun sets at the moment around six. Because we have this eight day to nine day stretch you really want to do two huts a day and skip one just to have one in the middle for lunch or something. But you sort of have to be a bit mindful of <laughs> the night. <laughs> So Tarnhut is over a thousand and forty meters and we got here and we dragged wood down and ta -da! someone already cut firewood and they actually have chopped down heaps more trees than the last time when I was here. So I just cut up our own that we don't have to touch someone else's and there might be someone that needs it more than, than we do. I think if I had to choose one Richmond Ranger's hut that I really really liked and it's Tarn hut. I had a zero day here and set out a bit of rain and in the evening and in the night I had a frog concert. There were so many frogs in the tarn here and they were singing all night. Cutesy little place. Five hours to Mount Rintel Hut. This way, a very, very short day for us today. climb for today. We climb up and over here onto that ridge and up to Purple Top. We are on Purple Top now. And it's very, very icy and windy, isn't it? Cold, very. cold wind. Cold, had to put my buffs on. But we have a beautiful view. Kia She's letting me talk into the camera. And we can just see uh, Mount Alice is in the clouds over there. We have a front um, from the west coast coming in, but we should be fine. Um, and somewhere here in this little gut was Top Wairoa Hut. So we came all the way over here now. And we still have to go into this saddle. But beautiful views. With icy, I mean the wind is icy, the track is fine. <laughs> It's just really cold wind, <laughs> but apart from that, the track is pretty good. And there is people. We drop down. You can just see the roof of Rintel Hut. And this 
thing here is Mount Rintoul, so you can just see the track going from the tree line out into the open, up the chute and onto the top. It's us tomorrow! Looks like fun! So you may not be able to see that, but there's this little spot in this clearing over there and it's shiny this is Davel hut this is where we're gonna be maybe in one and a half days something like that so we go down to rental hut now and we're gonna have a relaxed long afternoon hopefully in the sun and um, we're looking forward with anticipation to tomorrow's climb, slog, whatever you want to call it, up this beautiful big mountain. We have Mount Rintel and then Little Rintel. We have Old Man and it's going to be a long day out on the tops and on the ridges. So we hope that we're going to get the same weather like today and that we get some views and probably a little bit of icy cold wind we'll see 